For this demonstration, we've set up a demo environment here labeled as the corporate network that has a lot of different applications running, including expense reporting tools, corporate directories, and SharePoint servers. And in the demo, we access that corporate environment through two different ways. The first is through VPN, where we have a remote desktop machine that has a VPN client, and it VPNs into a concentrator to be able to access those applications. For the Zero Trust experience, we have another remote desktop machine that goes to the Akamai Cloud in order to access that corporate network. And you have the same corporate applications, but the access to those applications is different. The corporate network is the same environment for both VPN and Akamai Zero Trust, meaning the exact same applications are used in both scenarios, but only the access method is different. So let's get started. During this demo, we're going to show a couple of different experiences. The first is going to be the user experience, where we'll explore how users interact with their corporate applications, and we'll look at the difference between VPN and Zero Trust. Then we'll see it from a hacker's perspective to see how the network responds, and we'll show why an identity aware proxy is such a powerful approach to Zero Trust. So we've logged into our demo machines, and you can see that it's a split screen view where we have the VPN experience on the left and the Akamai Zero Trust experience on the right. The first persona is that of a salesperson that has access to corporate applications that they need to go about their daily business. Applications like Microsoft Outlook for email and web applications like a corporate directory expense reporting tools, and a basic time tracker. Typical apps that a corporate user can access over a VPN connection. But as a sales user, there's a lot on the network that they don't need. There's an IT department, engineering, and HR teams with their own applications. And sales doesn't need access to engineering's Jenkins application, as an example. But because it's on the network, if this salesperson knows how to get there, they can access it. There's no reason that the salesperson should have access to this application. And maybe access to Jenkins is not that big of a deal to have visibility into. But what if there was a financial transaction application, like say, accounts payable? As a salesperson just exploring the network, it might be innocent enough. But as a hacker, this kind of access is gold. We all know the story about the HVAC vendor with VPN access to the network that allowed point of sale terminals to be hacked, which affected 41 million consumers. And this sort of network access is how it was done. If we contrast that to the zero trust experience, we can see that the same salesperson has access to the same authorized applications. Here, the contacts application, the time tracking app, and the expense reporting tool. The difference, though, is anything that the salesperson hasn't been explicitly allowed to access, they can't access. So if we try that Jenkins application, we can't get there. Similar to that accounts payable page, there's no access and we're unauthorized. This user is only allowed access to certain applications and nothing else on the network. In a zero trust experience, corporate applications stop being just anywhere on the network and they don't need to be bookmarked in a browser. There's a user portal that shows the applications that this user is allowed to access with those apps gathered in one convenient place. These apps, shown for the sales user, are the only ones that they can access. Everything else is blocked due to the inherent nature of our identity-aware proxy solution. And we can see the same applications as before. For example, the directory.
But it doesn't have to be just about web applications. Thick client applications like Microsoft Outlook work as you would expect them to by using the Zero Trust client. Here we can see a couple of emails and the same email inbox. And as you can see, we're connected to the same Exchange server, but on the Zero Trust machine, we still don't need VPN. Outlook is treated like any other Zero Trust application that is secured through the Yakamai Edge. Because access is cloud based, we can even remove ourselves from the remote desktop machine and log in as the same sales user from anywhere here on our own work laptop. So I get access to all the same applications that I did before. Now, as a salesperson, they are completely mobile, and the office truly becomes any Wi-Fi hotspot. They don't need a corporate machine with a VPN client on it, and they can have access to the same application experience from a PC or tablet from anywhere they're connected to the internet. If we need access to email, we simply log into Office 365 and access our Outlook. Similar, we have Salesforce Access, which is a SaaS-based application accessible through the portal. And we see the same directory as before. And it's not just the sales team. All corporate users could have a similar sort of experience with a portal that only shows them their authorized applications. So if we log out, and then log in as an IT administrator, you can see we have a completely different set of apps, including Splunk, and SSH. If I take a look at the IP address of this machine, you can see that I'm accessing a remote machine through my browser all securely. And HR, they have their own set of applications, including that accounts payable app and SharePoint. Every user group is only allowed access to the applications that they need, and they can't access anything else. It's secure because every user and every request is authenticated, and only authorized apps are permitted. Even though we're accessing the same data center and the same applications as we did through VPN, the user experience is completely different. And from an access perspective, it's different as well. So if we take a look at the network diagram, all of the applications are hidden behind the Akamai Intelligent Edge. So even with no micro-segmentation in the data center or access control lists built into the network infrastructure, the network is inherently protected through zero trust. Each user is given explicit access to their authorized applications and nothing else. We also have a web application firewall sitting in line and DNS threat protection available as well. So we've enhanced the security posture of the user and improved their user experience. And we've seen that they can access only the applications that they're authorized for. But let's see how secure the solution really is and look at it from a hacker's perspective. And to do this, we'll go back into our remote machines. IT departments deal with malware threats on a daily basis, and making sure the network is secure when they may not own the devices connecting to it is a daunting task. Let's look at the security posture of VPN versus Zero Trust from a malware perspective. 
This program simulates a piece of malware that scans the network, checks for open ports and vulnerabilities, and when possible, it takes screenshots and exfiltrates data to a server out on the internet. Now it's really scanning our network, and you'll see in a minute the devices it found, as well as the exfiltrated data. We've started the program on both machines, and you can already see the difference in speed between the VPN machine and the Zero Trust machine. In the Zero Trust machine, the TCP ports are open, but it takes a while for it to time out because the malware can't find anything. On the VPN machine, the malware script runs through the network very quickly. So we'll wait for the Zero Trust machine to get finished. And we can see that the VPN is already done. So because VPN is on an open network, the network scan found 22 applications. Now notice the host names and the ports and the internal IP addresses. Here for accounts payable, we have an internal 10 dot address, and we have ports open on port 22, 80, and 443. If we look at our exchange server, we notice those open ports. And if we look at the exfiltrated data, we can see everything that this network scan was able to record and send back home to its command and control server. It includes screenshots, the open ports, potential vulnerabilities, IP addresses, everything. Now here's something we haven't seen before. Download. Because this scanned the network, we have a full map of everything that was found. Now obviously this is a file server of some sort, and it contains confidential information. Again, all the things that a hacker would want. Now if we look at the zero trust side, it's a stark difference. Only four applications were found, and there was no exfiltrations and no application exploits found. On the web applications, only ports 80 and 443, which is web traffic, is allowed. Now for our thick client, Microsoft Outlook, we see those open ports that allow Outlook to work. But also, look at the IP addresses. All of those IP addresses are public and all are owned by Akamai. So if you try to connect to any of them, you'll either get a login prompt or a connection refused. And the entire corporate network is hidden we see no private IP addresses. The attacker here can only try to attack a public IP address, which is owned by Akamai, and they have to try to do it using standard web protocols, like HTTP posts and GET commands. And Akamai Zero Trust would block the attempts in the cloud. For the application that has a known vulnerability, Akamai's web application firewall sits in line to all requests. So here we can see a potential SQL injection exploit. We'll take a look at the Contacts app, and then we'll launch an attack. So here you can see our Contacts page, and in the query string, you see the trademark SQL injection. This attack is attempting to update the routing information. If we go back to our profile, we can see that the routing information and accounting information has changed. Now, if we try that same exploit on the Zero Trust experience, we see that Akamai Web Application Firewall has identified the SQL injection and denied access to that page. Akamai Zero Trust has DNS threat protection enabled to be able to block malicious domains before they even have a chance to infect the PC. For example, that phishing email you may have seen earlier. You would need a separate solution to protect against these sort of threats. There's nothing stopping a user from clicking that link and getting phished or downloading malware here taking us to a demonstration phishing website.
With Akamai Zero Trust, all DNS requests are inspected in the cloud. If Akamai sees a malicious request, like this phishing link, we'll inherently block it, and the user will get a warning. But what if the machine is already infected, or the user plugs in a malicious USB, or there's a piece of malware that's already on the machine that's really, really sneaky? Here, we'll go to our favorite cat site. It certainly looks innocent and fun and entertaining. Let's download that hilarious looking cat wallpaper so we can take a break from this demo. Now, if I click run, I think we all know what's going to happen. So let's look at it from the Zero Trust machine. If we try to go to that same site, here we have identified it as a malware website and access is denied. Looking at the product dashboard, let's take a look at our Zero Trust demo environment. And here we can see the domains that have been blocked, our LOL cat site and our phishing domain. Digging into more details, we can see that we blocked the site, provided an error page, and we had known confidence that this was a malware site. We can even dig into more details about the threat. Similarly, if we look at application access, we get a dashboard where users are accessing these applications from and what browser they're using, login failures, including passwords and users, as well as the top applications and top user. So as you can see, Akamai's Zero Trust solution protects your applications, your users, and your network in the cloud. It's a full suite of tools that includes application access, DNS protection, and web application firewall.